Hello everyone, I'm here today and I'm back with another coffee hacks video because apparently two was not enough. So I have a couple of different hacks I wanna test out today where you're going to see what is up with them. They're all coffee related. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you do and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Saturday. And you can also check out the other coffee hack videos which we'll link at the end of the video for you. And so without further ado, let's get into this. So the first hack I wanna test out actually involves a blind taste test because you know, those are fun. And I've heard that grinding up a little bit of fresh nutmeg and putting it in either with the, in the grinder with some beans or you put it in with the ground coffee, whatever you have, then it makes a big difference in terms of like adding this earthy nuttiness and almost sweetness to the coffee. So what I wanna test out today is seeing if I can actually taste the difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grind up some fresh nutmeg. I'm gonna brew one cup of coffee, just plain with nothing else in it. And then I'm gonna brew another cup of coffee and I'm gonna do some dashes of this into the little, um, the filter right here. And then I'm gonna put some tape on the mug that has the nutmeg in it. And I'm gonna have Chris either keep it the way it is or switch it on me. So I don't know which cup has nutmeg in it and which one doesn't. And then I'm going to do a blind taste test. We're gonna see if I know the difference. So cup one of coffee is done without any nutmeg in it. So I'm gonna leave that there. So they said for a pot of coffee to do a full teaspoon of nutmeg. So I'm gonna say for like an eight ounce cup, we're gonna do a couple of dashes and I'm putting it right into the coffee filter here. Okay, got some shavings in there. That feels good. Oh, it smells really good guys. So you can see, see those little white, white dashes. So that's all the nutmeg. So. It's like enough that I feel like I'd be able to taste it, but it's not too much that's gonna overpower the coffee. So now, brewing cup number two. All right, you can see, it looks dirty, but that is just nutmeg right there. So we're gonna close that up, and we're going to brew number two. Okay, so I have the two mugs of coffee right here, and Chris has moved the tape and has written, this one has nutmeg, or does it? Thank you, Christopher, that's very helpful. So I'm going to taste test and see if there's a difference. Okay, and by the way, this is just black, like it doesn't have anything else in it, except for the nutmeg. Or does it? There's not a very strong difference. I'm gonna guess it's the one with the tape though. That's my guess. Hang on, I'm gonna go ask him. Turns out I was wrong, everyone. It was the one without the tape. And the reason I thought the one with the tape is because it tasted a little bit milder. It didn't taste as like bitter than this one. So either I didn't put enough in or I just don't taste the difference at all. Like I think if I put cardamom in it as well as cinnamon and made it like more pumpkin spicy, I'd be able to tell the difference, but I wanted to keep it to straight nutmeg, but I didn't want to overpower the coffee either. So I don't know, have you guys tried this before? Would you recommend putting more in than I did? I don't know. I didn't taste the difference. Now for the next hack, I'm gonna make a cake. But not just any cake, my friends. No, no, this is one of those microwave cakes. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Rachel, they're disgusting and you've done them before with Adeline. But this recipe tells me that it doesn't taste like a microwave cake. They, they promised and it has coffee in it. So I thought, let's try it out. I don't discriminate. All coffee in all forms, I will take it. So I need a bunch of ingredients, okay. I think we got everything. Sorry, I forgot one. So basically I just have to put everything into the mug and whisk it together. Seems pretty simple. And I didn't even tell you, this is a caramel macchiato coffee cake, which just is even better than just a coffee coffee cake. Even though coffee cake doesn't actually have any coffee in it. Did anyone else know that? That's off topic. So we need to start with three tablespoons of milk. That's like one and a half, Rachel. Pay attention. One and a half tablespoons of vegetable oil, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a tablespoon of caramel sauce. Get all that caramel in there. And now five tablespoons of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of instant coffee granules. This is a very complicated recipe for like one serving. No, complicated is the wrong word. Involved, it's an involved recipe. Then two tablespoons of granulated sugar, three quarter teaspoon of baking powder and a pinch of salt. Now I just have to whisk this together and then microwave for a minute 30. This by the way is what the cake looks like in terms of the batter. So now let's go microwave this. Oh my gosh, living dangerously. It's getting like right up to the top, but it's not going over. So that's good. Still needs another 23 seconds. All right, let's see this cake. Looks kind of cakey, feels nice and moist. 
It's promising so far. It smells good. I mean, it's not the most attractive looking cake because it's like all peeled off the outside because I guess it rises a lot and then it deflates a little, which is normal. Um, but that's like the only thing. Not super cute looking on top. So I'm gonna try it alone and then I'm gonna try it with the, um, this is the coffee ice cream that I did in my last hack video. That is so good. So if you're gonna watch anything, go and watch that video. I'll put it at the end of the video for you guys. Uh, but it's delicious. First, let's try it by itself. That's pretty cakey. I wouldn't have thought that was made in the microwave. Like usually those have a very like gummy taste to them. This one doesn't. I get notes of caramel in it. Not as strong on the coffee, but like it's, it's pretty good. Let's put some ice cream on it. Oh, it's so much better. Okay, if you're gonna make this cake, only make it if you're gonna eat it with the ice cream because it's so good. Because this one has like a really strong coffee taste and this one has a strong caramel taste. So like the combination is like, V recommend it's really good. The next hack involves whipped cream, which means I immediately add this to the list of ones I want to test. And it's basically just taking fresh whipped cream and instead of putting it on top of your coffee, which is also delicious, don't get me wrong, but it's taking whipped cream and putting it in the bottom of a mug first and freezing it and then putting hot coffee on top. And apparently that's a great way to get the taste of the whipped cream, but you don't just get like a mouthful of whipped cream and that's it. So we're gonna test it out and we're gonna see if that's true. Because again, don't get me wrong, I do love whipped cream on top of stuff. It's delicious, but it'd be nice to get that taste, but not all the whipped cream all at once, you know, just like space it out a bit. So I'm basically just like, painting the sides of the cup a little bit because that's what they did in the picture. I don't know why I'm putting a lot of whipped cream in here. That's fine. I'm putting more whipped cream in the bottom of the mug than I would if I put some on top. So now whipped cream is in the bottom right there. And now I'm gonna go and put this in the freezer and then we'll be right back. Okay, got the mug out of the freezer. You can see it is frozen. I guess you can't really see that it's frozen. Trust me it is and it's very cold. Right, let's see if this tastes like whipped cream coffee. So first I'm just gonna sip it as is without stirring. It tastes like black coffee. Now let's stir up this stuff on the bottom. I just realized I poured hot coffee into a frozen mug. You better be one to like drink your coffee fast with this one. The whipped cream is still frozen on the bottom, that's impressive. But it is lightening up my coffee, like it's clearly becoming mixed in. Nope, now it's just making my coffee cold and it doesn't really taste that sweet. And I'm missing any sort of semblance of taste of whipped cream. It's just like kind of creamy, not even kind of sweet, cold coffee. Not even cold coffee, it's lukewarm, which is worse. I have very strong feelings about temperature of coffee. So this, this hack, is the bust. Now I wanna test out a hack that I've seen around for like a long time and I've never actually tested it out before. And that is taking coffee beans and putting them into a bowl and sticking vanilla scented candles on top and lighting them. And it's supposed to give this like scent of a French vanilla latte. So I wanted to try it two different ways. So one way I've kind of had it going for a while now cause I wanted to make sure it was like warming up the beans. So you can see I have two little tea lights in there that are vanilla scented and I have the beans all around it and everything. And like, I'm just, I'm not smelling any coffiness. Like I'm not really even smelling any vanilla if I'm honest. So what I also got is I got one of these big candles cause I feel like people have these more than the scented little tea lights. So I thought maybe if I put this into like a mug and then put coffee beans around it and lit it, Maybe that would work, I don't know. My guess is that it's not gonna smell like anything because the glass of the candle is gonna to be too insulating and it's not gonna be able to heat up the beans enough. That's just my guess, I don't actually know. Hmm, <laughs> this might be messy. I'm gonna put the lid on the candle so the coffee beans don't get in it. So now that there are coffee beans surrounding this entire candle, I'm gonna light it and just let it kind of chill for a bit and we'll see if it smells like anything other than vanilla, because obviously it should smell like vanilla. All right, candle, go forth and smell like a latte. Okay, it's been like 40 minutes and both of these candles have been going for that long, this one for longer, probably close to two hours for this one. And like, oh, <laughs> that was scary. 
Um, this one smells slightly more like coffee than, like this one does not smell like coffee or vanilla at all. Like this did not work. This one, I'm trying to tell if it's the vanilla that I'm smelling and I just want to smell coffee or if it's actually the beans. Now, I think it's just the vanilla candle. I don't think, this did not work for me. I don't know if it's worked for you. If it has, let me know how you did it because um, for me, not so much. What do you guys think? Have you tried any coffee hacks before? Are there any that I've tested that you've done and you really like or didn't like? Or are there any that you want me to test in the future? Because I'm always up for more coffee hacks, if you know me. Or cookie hacks. Let me know in the comments if you have any cookie hacks you want me to test. I will not say no to cookie hacks. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you do, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on new videos every Saturday. And that's everything. I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome weekend, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.